All right, uh, this is episode two. Uh, make sure to go check out the first episode uh, where we did the, I guess Derek did the, the box and uh, subwoofers and, and amp and all that stuff. So this episode we get into the rather sophisticated kick panels, talk about why those are better uh, versus doing you know, tweeters up high or in the dash. Uh, and he works on and building a cover for the amp uh, and kind of buttoning up the system. So I uh, hope you enjoy this one. Uh, this the detail that he gets into is just insane. So when you first take a look at this system, you think, well, it's really simple, but there's a lot of complexity that goes into that simplicity. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we'll do a wrap up here at the end. Well, this is kind of a bummer. We have this uh, high-res Sony deck here. And we opted to use the fiber optic output. And as we usually do, we do run analog you know, RCAs anyway. Anyway, so we waited for a fiber optic cable that was long enough, ran that, got it all working. Well, kinda. And then if all else fails, you read the instructions. So this is a little bit of a bummer, but the optical connection, blah, 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 is connecting so on and so forth. But when the optical connector is made, the volume controls on the unit and the remote commander do not work. So what that means is this beautiful volume knob will not work, which is not unusual. Same thing with high-res players. And usually what we'll do is we'll put in a secondary knob. Um, we already have one knob here. This is for the, for the base knob to control the subwoofer independently. But I don't think it's feasible to do a second knob. It just makes everything much more complex for the volume. And plus, this is such a nice volume knob anyway. And yes, this kit still needs to be painted. Um, so we're back to analog. Um, we do have music. It actually sounds very promising. Right now we just have the bass hooked up because I'm about to work on the kick panels. So speaking of kick panels, um, there's definitely a nice spot in here. I'm gonna do the uh, four inch Dyn audio with the uh, tweeter. And first thing we had to do, I kind of didn't videotape this, sorry, but uh, I took all the brackets out. And uh, I don't know, we got some hokey wiring going on. Not a big fan of these scotch blocks um, so we'll just do what we can but we're going to relocate this computer um, basically just up underneath here where it's out of the way so we made some custom brackets um, this one is going to bolt back here onto the factory HVAC bolt and then that bolts through that bracket there then we made this bracket is all just three quarter inch flat stock and that bolts into here and it bolts from the top because it hangs down a little bit no more than than this factory AC condenser here but I had just made one that bolted from the bottom and literally just that little bit extra with the bolt showing I don't know I just didn't didn't like it so going with the obsessed theme we remade the bracket it fits in here nice and solid um, it's keyed so it goes in bolts in there and let me just bolt it up and I'll show you in a second okie doke now you can see how that that bracket bolts in there it's pretty easy then uh, this bracket bolts on top and this is actually the first bracket I had and you see how it mounts from underneath but the reality is just a golden head sticking out if you put your head moving up on the glove box, see how you can, well, I guess you can still kind of see it, but I didn't want it to be much more visible than, than this piece here. We can put a black cover over it, that's not a problem. But anyway, it kind of disappears all at the same time. So if you're in a seating position, this is at like head height looking down, you're never gonna see the computer and it's rock solid. We took these little rubber grommets that used to kind of wedge into this part here and just kind of made them. So we moved them to the front too. So it, um, you know, so it doesn't doesn't vibrate up against. There's a little bit of tension on it, but yep, that's up in there, nice and solid. And I'm kind of thinking this might be a big waste of time because Matt's putting in a new computer and a new engine. So maybe they can reuse the brackets. Who knows? So on the driver side, we had a similar situation. We had this little component here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's got a bunch of FCC, and it's going to kill you warnings on it. But uh, that was down here, so right now we basically just made, found a mounting bracket up there and just moved it up a little bit. Um, we'll put a second 
mount here depending on how the kick panels pan out and we'll remove this um, I think the obstacles are now taken care of we can start building some kicks this is uh, backtracking a little bit but um, I wanted to show the dynamat in the doors you got it on both sides um, we have a full layer on the inner skin keeps down any vibration and also on the outer skin as needed what we had to do is um, cut out basically remove this part from the door uh, just to allow for the bigger driver we then use mounts that mount directly to the metal and the cut part we also put some paint on there happen to have some electric blue paint to match and uh, I'll show you the bracket that we made. Fernando made this. It's actually a, an insert spacer that's on the door panel right here that will sit perfectly contoured, hard to tell, but flush up against the door. So when the speaker mounts through it, you can see the provisions for the mounting holes here. These uh, Torx heads are only to hold the spacer in place. But basically it's going to pull the speaker, the door panel, the spacer, and the metal all together to give it the most solid possible mount without welding braces in the door. That's very important for mid-base. Okay, this is with the door panel on and you can just see like, the, the metal behind there and just how close the tolerances are. So that'll give a nice solid mount. We will put um, a little bit of a rain guard protection on top just to keep any water, because this is technically considered a wet side of the door. Oops, I'm not sure what I'm pushing here on the camera. And uh, yeah, basically door's designed to have water go in the top on the outside, drain through, and just drain out the bottom and come out of there. So this you have to kind of consider as being wet, so you always want to put some kind of rain guard protection on there. It's overlooked a lot of times, and then the speakers come back all rusty and wondering why they're not working. So here is the rain guard, as we call them, and it's glued on the back of the actual spacer. A um, long time ago, I made a little template because it's just an easy way to cut them out so that fits most six and seven inch drivers. And uh, this weird shape of the ring basically contours the inside of the door panel. It's not necessarily a mounting ring as much as it is actually a spacer, just so there's no play between where the, the actual driver mounts and the um, you know, get out of here, fly. The, um, uh, it bolts to the metal of the door, and as you can tell, so you can see, basically it just covers the back. Um, it's closed cell on the outside, open cell on the inside. So any kind of water that potentially might get inside is not going to land on the speaker. Also keep in mind that there's the thickness of the door panel and the thickness of the metal, so it probably brings it out another, maybe almost a quarter of an inch. All right, time to put them in. So here we have the tweeter pods. Um, these are the factory tweeter pods. I took I took one tweeter out. What I just realized is on the passenger side we have a little bit of funky glue where the tab broke off. Um, my guys didn't tell me about this, but I honestly don't think it was from us because. A, we don't use this type of glue, and we're also very careful to put that on. Um, point of my story is, I don't like tweeters where tweeters aren't, well, not that they're not supposed to be there, but they're going to be non-functional. And I was thinking of basically just filling this in with plastic so it's just a regular sail panel. I'm going to check to see if Honda sells them, but either way, before I put any time into that, making tweeters disappear, the opposite of what we normally do. I'll we'll see if they have a replacement piece for this. Can't be very expensive. Just a matter of if it's still available. Yeah, just as I'm trying to finish the project, I make more projects because that's what I do. All right, just before I bolt this in, um, you can see the rain guard. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't quite touch the window rail, but the speaker doesn't even go back that far. Then uh, we like to just solder the wires on there. Uh, I understand you can put connectors, but um, I don't know. I think soldering's better. Let me put heat shrink on there. We put a little Sound of Motion logo SIM on the positive. It's kind of traditional for what we do. And then we also put a strain relief on there. 
So just in case somebody does need to service the door and they take them all out and, and they yank it, it doesn't rip off the terminals if they drop it or whatever. But um, it's a really nice, like satisfying, solid click the way those, uh, those bolt in there. Kind of cool on this edition or generation of car. The grill comes off so you can take it off and look at it. Um, I think this is gonna sound really good. Here we just have regular pan heads that um, basically paint it with Rust-Oleum and then baked it on. Um, it's kind of like ghetto powder coating, but I didn't want to go through the trouble of setting up. We do have a little powder coating machine, but the brackets that are not exposed to the elements, I think are sufficient with just painting and baking. And I also did the little brackets for the, um, for the computer. That's gonna go back up. So let me bolt these in and that will be it for the door speakers and doors. You like how we have a thousand dollar woofer just dangling there? Well, that is why we have the strain relief. Um, yeah, that was kind of just a joke, but what I forgot to mention is that A, those Torx heads, they were just for lining this up. These are like four provisions left from the factory speaker and that was just to line the uh, trim ring up. We actually did put a little bit of silicone. We, me, myself and I, uh, I put some silicone on the back of this to secure it to the door panel so it's really, really solid. So if the door panel actually comes off, the door panel comes off separate from the ring. And last but not least, we obviously ran 14 gauge um, speaker wire directly to the woofers. And a lot of the newer cars, you can use the existing wire. Depends on the power of the system. And uh, this one had, it was just too thin. So obviously the caliber of this system and the caliber of the speakers and everything we're Upgraded everything to 14 gauge, including inside the kick panel. I don't know if you can tell. I'm probably uh, documenting way too much of the little crap, but this is a. Uh, I just put a little bit of foam. It's kind of like a felt tape that we use to mitigate rattles or anything like that, because this was plastic on plastic, where it um, <clears throat> where, where it clips into the door here. So. There was just a little bit of play in it. I actually have them playing and they sound amazing. Yeah, so now there was no buzzing, but just in case, I don't know, plastic expands when it goes to Florida or wherever this car ends up. Um, just a little attention to detail thing that goes along with this obsessed theme. <laughs> All right, back to work. I'm not sure why I'm filming right now. Actually, I do know because I'm waiting for Bondo to dry. I'm having a bit of a writer's block here. Um, back in the day, yes, I've built many and many of different kick panels, all different shapes and sizes, all different methods. And I'm having a little bit of a writer's block here because we have this piece that detaches. I have some vinyl that matches really good. I can build my own. I got enough space now on both sides. I'm trying to retain the factory look as much as possible because that's kind of a theme here. And I'm trying to retain the dead pedal on the driver's side. So I do work with plastic a lot and heat gun, heated this, tried to mold this in with a little uh, plastic. So this is basically a template of how it's gonna sit. We use a laser pointer just to kind of get left and right equal as far as where they point up into the uh, abyss here behind us. And um, yeah, so I tried to heat this and just kind of push this in and mold it, but it wasn't even starting to go anywhere I wanted it to go. So the next thought was I'm making a, a template that's bigger than this. I'm going to the wood shop here. Um, so what I did is basically just making a negative of that with some Bondo and that's why I'm waiting for that to dry so I decided to film. All of this might go down as not being used at all. Um, I'm not trying, I'm not sure why I'm trying to invent the, reinvent the wheel here but uh, the idea is, is basically we'll use that plastic insert, the template that we have for the Dynaudio mid and tweeter, build this out around it almost like a little bit of a stack fab and then angle it into the plastic kick panel that we have here and kind of comes out. Now what we don't want is like some kind of horn effect, you know, like uh, being recessed too deep, but ultimately it would actually retain most of this shape and then, uh, then we can put a nice looking grill over it. Well, 
we'll see where this takes us. So we may be onto something here. Um, basically, I just made a bunch of layers of uh, plastic extruded PVC with a quarter inch ABS mount on the back. I'm being a little bit stubborn because I have the room to put these drivers pretty far in. So it goes against my grain to bring them out. And I want the, I still want them to be angled properly. And I want the part that sticks out the furthest, which is this forward side, not to protrude any further than the factory kick panel. And the factory kick panel is kind of fat. It's got this big, uh, you know, pretty good size. Yeah, so I don't want the furthest part of the speaker to protrude any further than the original kick panel, which means recessing the uh, part closer to me. All right, we'll see where this goes. All right, I apologize for skipping a few steps here. Um, I was a little bit lost to decide on how I was going to actually do this. But here's what we ended up doing. So I cut those teardrop things that you saw last time. And then I basically cut, uh, there's the other one, both of them down to be symmetrical. And uh, I think the next step is, is just to grind some of this away. It's basically, basically quarter inch here, two and a quarter inches there. That gives us the most angle without being too, Ridiculous. Um, okay, so this part here is actually the contouring part that snaps in from the original kick panel. So we basically just salvaged that and cut everything else off. I replaced the uh, the baffle with a three quarter inch PVC. Yes, it's still ugly. Yes, it will be prettier when it's done. And that allows us to basically lock it in, in and get this shape here without having to rebuild everything. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of, uh, this is just this nylon stuff that you can't really glue to. So, a little rudimentary, but it's basically stapled <clears throat> and uh, screwed together and then glued from behind. We have some liquid PVC that, that uh, bonds those two pieces together. And then the rest of it is just basically all uh, CA glue, but rock solid. This piece here is ABS, just because it's a little bit tighter to, uh, to screw to for the actual driver. And uh, we'll devise some kind of mount where it actually probably bolts to one of these um, factory M5 threads, but um, yeah, so that's as far as we've gotten now. And I think, not quite sure how that's gonna transpire. Um, we'll have a grill that probably protrudes a little bit, so we'll build that out, and that'll be just removable kind of contours in there. So the ultimate goal was, these kick panels are smaller than the factory by about a half an inch, and it allows us to use the factory floor mat without having to do any custom binding, which I know is an option, but, um, kind of didn't want to make them any bigger than they need to be. Sorry, no light. So there it is behind the bed pedal and very, very efficient layout. It's going to be wrapped in vinyl and uh, hopefully it'll look like there's nothing there. I'll put some gray grill cloth on it and sound quality, imaging, staging, all that's going to be the main objective, but aesthetics are also very important. So this is how we came up with this. And uh, this is actually, man, I haven't built kick panels in so long, but it's probably the first set of kick panels I actually built out of plastic. Usually it's MDF or some kind of fiberboard or fiberglass altogether from back in the day. So, new experience. All good. I'd call that success. I like it. We got uh, a whole kick panel made out of plastic. The speakers, the uh, little module, whatever you want to call it, is recessed. So we can put a trim piece around it that holds the vinyl down. This is going to be vinyl wrapped. And uh, then goes on the speaker and the tweeter. And then obviously a speaker grill over it. And then the whole thing will kind of just snap in. But um, yeah, turned a piece of plastic into, you know, we gave it a little bit of shape. This is the piece that I made yesterday and then uh, basically just molded the whole thing together and I don't know, it's hard to tell but it's got got some curvature to it um, the main reason I did that is because I wanted the clearance here so the passenger the driver is obviously right facing right at the driver 
I didn't want to bring this out any more than I had to. You can see I cheated. I, I bumped that out about three quarters of an inch. And uh, I wanted to recess that as much as possible. So this kick panel, this gray part up front here is the original part. You can see it's kind of stapled together, surgery, until the glue dries. Then, uh, and then the rest of it is just kind of shaped in to allow, you know, the sound to come out this way without any lateral reflections. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm extremely tired and I'm going to bed. I'm gonna let this uh, dry, whatever isn't dry, and then uh, tomorrow we will prime it, etch it, and maybe vinyl wrap it. Oh, I gotta figure out a mount, that's right. So, good night. All right, today was a good day. We got the uh, kick panels, so you're gonna back up a little bit, uh, finished as far as fabrication goes. Got them wrapped. Um, I had some some vinyl, <laughs> this is funny, and uh, just, I had enough to do both kick panels, the other one's over there, but if I mess up, I really didn't have enough, and <laughs> I still had the tag on when I bought it, it was back in 2006, so it was probably the last Civic I did. <laughs> um, anyway, the vinyl texture and color and sheen and everything matches really well, so I kind of wanted to use that. And what we did is we cut out all of the little notches that lock into the factory pieces here so there's no chance of any gap coming up then put this little brace in a spacer and basically just tapped a 10 24 hole right into the frame rail um it goes together pretty easily so yeah this goes in like like that you basically just lock it in where the factory pieces are. So this is a four inch screw. <laughs> it's a bit long, but getting it all to line up so it's uh, exactly, you know, where it threads to be. Anyway, that spacer then, once that's tight, that's tight. That keeps tension on it. It's also the central point for the speaker baffle. It holds in the whole kick panel, but it also makes it really, really solid for the four inch. And I'm not gonna screw the whole thing in because the screw gun's in the other shop. But then the next step is um, toying with the idea of, of there's going to be a little insert. This is probably kind of thick. Just something I covered in Alcantara. But I'm trying to figure out the tweeter look and mount. I think I probably have a little protrusion of the cup showing. And then obviously this guy goes in here. And then there'll be a grill that still sits flush covered in either black or gray grill cloth over the whole thing but yeah you get the idea so basically what you have to do to mount it or in the next person's case to dismount it is you take the screws out of this thing disconnect the driver pull that out then the tweeter will be mounted to the inner baffle I just kind of stuck the grill in there like I said to see what it looks like so picture the tweeter will remain here and underneath that cover will be this screw and you pull that out tweeter will remain in there and pull the whole panel out and that's it um again one of my goals was is not to make the kick panel any bigger than the factory and because the factory one was kind of big this one's actually smaller like it 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 we shaved a lot of it off in here, like I was saying, just to let the sound out. Um, the driver's side was a lot more challenging with the little hood release thing. And uh, so tomorrow's goal is basically get the drivers in. We already got sound, so I'm pretty excited about that. The best part is once the bass hits, because right now all we have is the door speakers and the subwoofer going. <laughs> but this freaking mirror totally... What is it? Old school, as soon as you hit the base, it goes <laughs> drops down. So, if the person who's getting this car is the base head, um, there'll be some bragging rights there. But, uh, we modified the tweeter cup, basically, just cut the lip off of it. The tweeter cup is going to be mounted in here, it'll basically just be glued. You can still take it in and out with the screw if need be. Then, this ring this is the insert ring that we made. Um, this goes underneath the speaker. There's a little cutout in here 
when the screw that holds this into the um, into the vehicle it gets recessed into that then this sits over that this will probably be covered or will be covered in a like an Alcantara so the little gap around there that you'll see it'll be taken up by that so ultimately all you'll see is you know the tweeter here then these holes are oversized because the mid-range is gonna sit like that um, the screws will go through the mid-range through the trim panel and hold into the quarter inch ABS behind it six of them should hold it all in place really really solid um, I kinda sorry hard to do with one hand the Dynaudio logo it's one of those things it's not straight or level with the bottom of the vehicle like if you were to put a level on it and what it is though is if you're sitting in the car looking at it it looks to be the most correct so no scientific method other than trial and error and that's how we opted for the positioning of the screws next will be <clears throat> another trim ring similar to that that'll be the actual speaker grill so that just recesses over that that'll be covered in grill cloth so the I don't know if I already said this when I started, but I painted these cups. The silver that they come with is darker than the silver on the speaker, so it didn't match. So I decided just to go black and make them disappear. So the grill is black. And if you want, you can take this grill off, obviously. I'm a purist, so the less grills, the better, for tweeters especially. Um, and there will be a grill over protecting it anyway, but for aesthetics, it might look better with the grill on. So if you were to go to a car show, and pull these grills off to showcase the speakers, I would put this grill on. But that's up to you. The joys of this business is that you're always learning. So I was going to cover these in uh, uni suede, and I, I started to. And then what I do is I take a little bit of CA glue around the back edge. I didn't want to wrap it over because I wanted this to be as thin as possible, and I didn't want it to be like a weird shape around the speaker. So I was just going to... Um, Put some CA glue around it to solidify the edge. Well, wouldn't you know it, the CA glue, instead of making it hard so you can sand it and paint it and manipulate it, it actually started to separate the uni suede. So today I learned that with CA glue, you can actually separate the uni suede. I don't know if this uh, is going to come out, but you can literally pull it apart. So there you go. That's, oh sorry, that's the backing, and this is the actual uni suede. Out of a bad situation, because I had to redo it, became a good situation, and I'll show you why. Because me, being German and doing super low tolerances on everything, yeah, this cup fits, but it's pretty tight. So, because this needs to slide over that to go in, it's going to be very tight. Will it fit? Yeah, no problem. And even fitting it in there is very, very tight. So I redid this with just the top half of the Unisuede. It basically took the backing off. And now the cup actually fits really, really nice. So that loosened up my tolerances a little bit. It allows this thing to slide in a little easier. And there you go. So now we got to redo the other one with Unisuede. And no, this is not the cheap that you buy online that's like $10 a yard. This is the stuff from uh, uh, Veterans. It's more like 60 bucks a yard or something. But yeah, learned something today. And we are on to the speaker grills. What I did here is plastic, ABS. Love working with plastic. And um, yeah, they're gonna go over like that. <clears throat> They're going to be wrapped in grill cloth, but before that, there's going to be, this is the most porous perforated aluminum that I can find. It's usually what I use for, for speaker grills. Um, I'll dust them in black just so there's no shiny stuff going through the actual grill cloth. So speaking of grill cloth, we have our options of dark gray, light gray, and black. What should we choose? Leave your comments below. Just kidding. This will be done by the time you see this. 
um, it's going to be black. Then some of the cool things is basically um, I stepped this down 3 16 of an inch here to make up the thickness of the you know the mid-range so basically this doesn't teeter-totter. Then we routed this out to recess the aluminum into it and look at how I don't know if you can even tell on camera but how precise that that edge is just so it doesn't detract from the ultimate edge where the grill cloth goes because if the grill cloth wraps over this you know it'll be jagged um, and on the back side did the uh, the same thing so I rounded this over just a little bit it makes it easier to lift it in and out around the tweeter when I had it straight it kind of got caught on the tweeter thing because it's so thick there but um yeah again super super precise like down to 64th of an inch um, without breaking the plastic never could have done this without a CNC machine my robots joking I did it with that but uh, yeah so I'm gonna glue those in wrap them and then stick them in the car all right here they are glued in nice and solid there's two sides of it one side has like a smoother edge I put that down here because people can touch it and this side's actually more of a cut edge and uh, that's going to be covered by the speaker grill so this edge being very very smooth you can't feel any of that that's just CA glue holding it in <clears throat> And then uh, I did put a tiny 16th um, radius uh, round over on it just to give it a nice feel, you know, no sharp edges. All right, next is going to just Dusty's black SEM paint or something and uh, wrap them in grill cloth. Actually, I lied. Next is not paint. Um, they're a little bit, you know, these are a tight fit. But unless you want to mar up the thing with like, you know, a wedge tool, skin tool there, airplane tool as we call them, they're a little bit hard to get out, especially once the grill cloth is on. So I'm going to put a tiny little pull strap up here. I'll just notch that out and finagle a little pull strap in there so you can take them out and show it off. I was all excited that I got this far to actually installing the kick panels. <laughs> I put the uh, driver's one in already with the speakers and everything and I realized they might not come out again. This might be the last time they actually go in. So I figured I'd uh, just document this real quick. Um, yeah, so if you wonder what happened here, an SEM can blew up on my hand so I got black fingers. But um, the wiring, pretty straightforward, uh, kind of standard in the industry when you have a woofer and a tweeter or a mid-range and a tweeter. This is the woofer, red being positive. This is the tweeter with white being positive. We also label them with the SIM logo on it. That's always positive, and it goes in the direction that the music flows. So on a crossover, a passive crossover, you'd have the writing going one way for the input and the other way for the output. So what I thought I'd do is basically just set the camera here and put it in. So. The tweeter, like I said, is um, yeah glued in there. Uh, the cup's glued in there. You can unscrew it here and take that out. I'm leaving the grill on now just so I don't poke the dome. So, so positive for the tweeter, negative for the tweeter. And I'm actually just, there's plenty of room, but I'm just gonna bend these, these in so they clear this because that sits up against that. All right, then that locks into here. So my engineering was proper. This should kind of line up with that hole that I, I put in there. I shortened the screws too from four inch to three inch. So yeah, you can see that's like rock solid in there. All right, then the magic cover plate. Get all the fuzz off of it. This is the one I talked about earlier. Should look at that, huh? It fits like a glove. Love it. Absolutely love it. Then what I do is I put some jute behind it. It's kind of like a 
you know, more than anything, it keeps the wires from buzzing. Oh, another big challenge on the driver's side was to get all of the factory harness located behind the little um, hood pole thing. Well, this kind of just, like I said, keeps wires from buzzing. Kind of like polyfill in a subwoofer box. And, uh, Absorb some rear standing weaves. <laughs> All right, here goes this beautiful driver. There we go. So, again, these screws actually go through the first piece and then screw into the second piece and sandwich the whole thing together. Watch, this is the part where I put the screwdriver through the cone. I've never actually installed the speaker in the car. I've installed it in the kick panel on the bench, but not in the car. It looks like we might benefit from a skew driver there. Very satisfying the way that tightens down. Even though they were a pain in the butt, I'm very happy with the way these came out. Can't wait to hear it. I feel like I'm watching too many Matt Mormon videos. I'm sitting here talking to myself. That was a joke, Matt. Kinda. I'm horrible at documenting stuff, if you haven't noticed, so I noticed the videos are getting longer as I'm progressing on this, but uh, in a way it's kind of fun. Can't wait to see what, what you edit out of this thing. There we go. I don't know if I actually showed the finished grill yet, so this is the back of it, and uh, I did a little bit of branding. I hope that's okay. Actually, I'm gonna take this guy off. It's only held in with the magnet. It's freaking strong. Oh, maybe a little bit of pressure fit. As long as it doesn't get sucked back and dent, dent the cone in. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a pressure fit. I was gonna use little pins to hold it on, but absolutely doesn't need it. But I like it. I think it looks good. A little pull tab up here. Comes out, you can show it off. This morning we're in our first round of tuning. We're using an old school RTA audio control piece, had it forever. The SA3055, along with the laptop. We are using the Moscone Aerospace, and it gives us just a little bit more options as far as how we. Uh, tune stuff in. One thing that I particularly like for time alignment is this large and small parameters where you can drastically move channels, delay, and also in a more subtle way. So that's a big benefit of this. Um, all the processing power is just better in it as well. What we have here is the all channels driven right now. What I do is I go through, I do channel one, which is the left kick panel, channel two, which is the right kick panel, three, four, I do time alignment, then I do individual equalization on each one, and I, sorry, I do that all the way down to the sub, with channel three being the door speakers, obviously the closest, and then the, yeah, you can tell, that has the most delay, and then they progressively get worse. And the sub is kind of a reference because it's in the trunk and it's farthest away, so we keep that at zero. I also am running the subs out of phase <clears throat> um, just because they are down firing, and it's a matter of how much time alignment you want to play with to get them back into phase. Uh, I do this all by ear, so the numbers are totally irrelevant to me. Um, I basically just sit there and go, you know, I, uh, I, I pick one of these, hit it, and then I go up, 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 down, arrow, and the same thing with the equalization. So inside we have a mic. It's been freshly calibrated not too long ago. And um, 
Let me silence that. And the mic is the old Iaska mic stand that we've used for decades and uh, seems to work quite well. I know there's all sorts of stuff out there where you can do the RTA on the laptop, but I like having the screen and the laptop, you know, simultaneously going, just easier for me. This is interesting. Because of the kick panel scenario, there's a drastic difference with a person sitting in the seat versus a person not sitting in the seat. Um, I did some listening this morning before I started tuning and that, that made a huge difference. So all this is, is basically a towel and some jute wrapped up for um, kind of uh, mimicking legs or whatever, blocking part of the driver's side kick panel. And uh, yeah, the way this works is I do tuning with my ears, especially time alignment, crossover points, gain settings, phasing, obviously very important, check to make sure everything's in phase, every single driver. Then, then I do time alignment in basically by ear, left to right kick panel, left to right door speakers, and then the door speakers in relation to the kick panels, and then I tie in the sub last in relation to everything. Um, again, all done by ear, it's kind of hard to explain. You can do the numbers and the measurements and they'll get you in the ballpark, but um, there's too many variables to really figure that all out scientifically. Then I go out and then I actually RTA it with the computer and the mic like you see right now and I do every single frequency, I'm sorry, every single driver individually, time together, see if there's any discrepancies. Again, good time to check phasing or polarity issues. Um, and I do that for all the drivers all the way down to the sub. And then I go back and I listen to it, which is the point I'm at right now. So I'm gonna go in, take a listen, see where we're at. And go through this like two or three times, depending on temperature, humidity, time of day, mood, tiredness, they all affect it. All right, we're back to the head unit. The kit we use is, a, is a, just a modified metric kit. So we blended the trim ring into it. And those who are familiar with it, these kind of just snap into the factory bezel. The problem is, <clears throat> that I find is they're not very strong because they bolt down here, but then the top, see how this, um, it's hard to tell with the light, but see how this, this flexes in here? Like, there we go. So the radio is basically held on by this, which is held on to this, which is just snapped into this. The factory bolts into the metal part of the kit. So what I did is I made small, little uh, bracket, a little focus, um, just 16th inch ABS. And it basically just allows you to screw it into the top mounting hole. So it's basically not gonna go anywhere. Um, it just solidifies the whole thing. Little touch, because I know, Matt, you're not anxious to get the car back. So remember those tweeter panels? The uh, sail panels that go up uh, there that had tweeters in them. Well, because I had nothing better to do, I got rid of those because we're not using those tweeters and it, I don't know, seems weird to have them there. You can see the mount is still there. Um, basically just filled it in. A little bit of sanding, plastic magic. This one, unfortunately, the clip was already broken, I think, when they did the leather kit, so I'll do something better than the glue they had on there. We uh, did do a brief search, couldn't find these anywhere. Jim did find some in Japan for $40, but uh, didn't feel like ordering them because we gotta ship it. The last missing link is this little cover that's gonna go over the amp. And uh, it sits just like this in the car. I don't know if you have it on the screen. So it's made out of quarter inch plastic. It's basically just cut to contour the back of the vehicle. Um, this gives a nice border to let the light shine through on the amp. But uh, what I want it to do is make it so it's removable so it looks good either on or off. And you've seen the amp with the cover off, but we need something to protect it. This is gonna act as a speaker grill, amp ventilation grill, the subs fire from underneath the amplifier and keep the air moving around it. Uh, the amps have fans on them as well. So uh, hopefully they uh, will stay cool. I've been running the system quite a bit with no issues whatsoever. Done similar applications with no issues. Anyway, what I did 
let's cut that out. We have a 3 16 rabbit here that's a 16 thick that allows us to use this steel insert. I'm using this particular pattern just because it kind of matches the top of the amp. Um, I'll be painting it black and then baking it on so it's nice and solid. Uh, it gets really, really tight here, but this is where the actual box comes in. And then my thought is to put a piece of 16th inch ABS over the whole top of it. So now you don't have a seam on the top, obviously, or on the bottom. So if you take it off, there's a nice little rounded corner here. This is just so it fits, uh, it's chamfered so it fits inside the well better. And uh, the 16th inch is gonna cover this area here as well. Let me, let me show it to you in the car. All right, so, hard to tell, but that kind of sits right in there. So that top of the box will be covered too. It'll keep this from bouncing down. I could put on a little aluminum strip here. That was the original idea, but I like this idea better. And then also this will all just be painted like a satin block so it looks nice and finished. Um, yes, left and right is different because there's nothing centered in this vehicle. So every step was a little bit of a compromise to make it look so it's not too dark. I mean, too dark, too, uh, too off center. But um, unless you bring out the caliber, I don't think you're gonna notice immediately. <laughs> the top piece will be finished in satin black as well, so you can put decals on it or sponsorships or whatever. All right, now I'm gonna paint the grill and then uh, we'll put it together. This is the panel from underneath. And the piece I showed you before, sorry, gotta aim where my hands are has uh, a quarter inch plastic on the bottom and there's 16th basically adhered to the top of it the two of them fused together and sandwiched in between it is the 16th or 16 gauge uh, perforated um, steel that's going to be the actual cover over it so the idea is is that this is where the the sub box sits and this is the original lip in the back of the trunk so it rests on that the sides like I said, the sub box on the other side. And literally can just be dropped right on top of it. We're gonna finish this in a satin black uh, SEM paint. And that will conclude the final chapter of this build, I think. And uh, it's just nice because you can take it off. Obviously you need to service anything, but if you flip the rug up, you will see the amp underneath here. And this acts as cooling, subwoofer grill. It's kind of multi-purpose uh, design that's uh, simple but I think, you know, execute it with a lot of attention to detail and keeps the trunk usable. That's the main thing. You put the cover down, you don't see anything. This is the, the right. kit it's supposed to. You're not, with the, you're not supposed to use those with the kit. The metal brackets? Yeah. Okay. But I want, then it leaves the, the whole radio dash piece like kind of flimsy. Gotcha. All right, so now that the professionals are back, those fancy brackets that I made here, I did the video on before, to secure the top, are gonna to be omitted because we're gonna mount it back with the originals. Now I didn't take the radio out, Fernando did, and uh, he's putting it back in. So we are using the metal brackets to keep everything way more secure than my jury rigging thing. We did um, open up these holes here on the side just to allow access to the ISO mount screws from the actual um, uh, radio mount to the kit. And there you have it, done right, the second time around. This is it, ready to ship. What we've been doing is running the audio system and I uh, gave it a quick retune. Let the speakers break in a little bit. This is the amp, the amp rack cover. We also um, upgraded the ground cable on the battery. I know it's getting a new battery, but Hard to tell, but there's a four gauge added to that. Matches the uh, power wire basically, so there's no weakest link in the system. And uh, all that's left to do is give it a quick polish, you know, make sure the paint looks good before I give it back to Matt. And uh, we're ready to put it on the trailer. 
Okay, so the car's here. It's back here at uh, HQ. So let me just give you a tour and we'll sort of walk around. I actually didn't get the full impact. You just watched all the stuff Derek went through. I, you know, of course, was in love with the sound. I'm even more in love with it. I literally this morning just watched all the clips. So I, I probably spent about three hours sitting here listening to the thing. Um, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like much. There's kick panels, door speakers, head unit, sub box i mean that's all it really is but when you see all the details of him you know filling and pulling off the tweeter holes it's it's really pretty darn incredible so one of the requisites that i i was hoping to achieve was that we wouldn't lose foot room all right and so the reason that you do and derek really didn't explain this all that much but the reason that you do tweeters and woofers the reason that you do kick panel speakers is that there's a more equidistant path to your ear so i have a much closer distance this speaker to that speaker now there's still more distance from my driver position seating between you know the passenger side and the driver's side but imagine the tweeters right here so there's one tweeter up here and you're and then the others all the way across the car so it's a lot easier to time align to grab a center image and the really baffling thing when you listen to this is that i mean the image is like boom it's like up here right here and that comes in tuning you saw him you know, work with the rta uh, work with the moscone processor and then tuning it by ear uh, and then you know setting all the all the all, all the cross of frequencies and everything like that. So the way that this system works is Sony GS, RSX GS9. So this is a reference grade modern head unit. Most of what I'm going to be listening to will be, you know, iPhone plugged in with a, you know, with a lightning cable. I'll be listening to Tidal, uh, Master Audio or Hi-Fi Audio or possibly Spotify at 20, 320 kilobits per second. But rather than listening Bluetooth, I'm going to listen with a, you know, with a cable connected. We also have a cable here a separate USB so if I was traveling or something I would put the you know cell phone I'd put it in my in my you know in my glove box here and just leave it leave it connected um, but most of the time I'll just plug the phone in set it here the other way that we can listen is you could put uh, like FLAC files some high-res files on a USB thumb drive and and and, and uh, you know and, and plug it in here as well I don't find myself doing that but I probably should for this you know reference quality setup so the head unit feeds the Moscone amplifier. We'll show you that in a second. Then, of course, they dynamated all the doors and uh, made it so that uh, none of this stuff, this plastic doesn't rattle, so everything, everything functions well. But notice my foot's still on the dead pedal. Uh, Derek talked about he actually captured some space here, captured some additional room, uh, maybe an inch or so of additional room so that I'm not you know, banging into the speaker there. Uh, and so we have tweeter, four inch woofer crossovers back in the trunk back there uh, and so those are crossed over passively i guess you could say so we have a separate external crossover uh, the methodology there is you know who's going to do a better job crossing over a dyn audio speaker than dyn audio themselves uh, and so rather than going full three-way active uh, we have single tweet single four inch passively crossed over uh, and then we are actively crossing over the six and a half inch woofers which are in the separate channels of, of the Moscone. So channel one, two, channel three, four, channel, you know, mono channel five would be the, would be, would be the subwoofers. So six and a half in the doors, uh, which, uh, which, you know, you got to put them somewhere and there's not enough room in the kick. And so that makes a lot of sense. So you saw how much effort Derek had to go into to get these doors really set up so we don't end up with all kinds of vibration. So again, when I'm sitting here, very simple system, simple front stage, no rear fill, just perfect. It's just the way I like it. Just crystal clear snap snare drum um, no high shrilly um, high frequency stuff i prefer dyn audios because of their soak dome tweeter um, i don't like uh, beryllium or titanium or some of the more modern technologies and modern materials used in like you know focal utopias and stuff like that i always thought they sounded too thin Dyn Audio just, and I've got Dyn Audio here in the garage. I got Dyn Audio set up in my, um, on my, on my, you know, my, my desktop. Um, I would love to have Dyn Audio in my home theater if it wasn't so, so expensive. I'm not, I'm not there yet in life. 
so that's the front stage, that's the setup. Um, we also have uh, cell phone capability, so the microphone's up here installed, and then sub control right here, on my, which is amazing. Remember, this system isn't tuned for, you know, isn't tuned for maximum bass, just maximum SQ, which is just amazing. Uh, and, you know, there's no reason to play this for you. You're not going to be able to replicate the sound with your, you know, with your cell phone speakers or your laptop speakers. So, and I, I can't because of, you know, copyright, but you get the idea. I'm going to close the doors. I'm going to sit here and the center image is, boom, right above the steering wheel right there. You listen to, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to listen to, Pink Floyd, the, you know, the Eagles, um, or anything even, you know, modern. All right, so that's a wrap. Uh, I know. 20 something thousand dollars. Uh, I hope it makes a little more sense now. Uh, the sheer amount of labor that goes into this, you know, the, you know, the simplicity of the products, but the complexity of making it all disappear is, uh, is rather arduous. And, uh, and I think Derek knocked it out of the park. Here's exactly what I wanted. I gave him a base guideline on what I was hoping to accomplish, and it uh, turned out even better than I thought. And most importantly, it sounds gosh darn incredible. So anyway, again, we're going to be giving this Civic away, Civic away at some point here, uh, probably you know, December, January, February, something like that. Uh, but I'm going to keep working through little parts and pieces of it. Uh, the engine and suspension will be the sort of the next things. And we'll figure out which wheels work best after I get the alignment done and the you know, suspension set up the way I want. Uh, but uh, the car's coming together. We're off to a really good start. The paint condition's great. Uh, we got all the dents removed, uh, the interior, believe it or not, I think I'm pretty much done with it. I'm going to do a steering wheel and leave it simple. Uh, and then, uh, and then um, you know, get the wheels, the suspension, brakes, all that stuff done. So anyway, thanks for watching this uh, two-part series. And um, I guess we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.